Good morning. I want to welcome everybody to the Los Angeles City Council. Today is Tuesday, January 7th, 2014. I believe, uh, Madam Clerk, we have a quorum. Could you please call the roll? Blumenfeld, Baden, Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Wizar, Kresker, Corian, Labaj, Martinez, O'Farrell, Parks, Price, Wesson. Ten members of President, a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, first order of business. Approval of the minutes. Uh, Corrette's moves. Uh, Fuentes seconds. Next. Committed to resolutions for approval. O'Farrell moves. Bonin seconds. That brings us where? Mr. President, today is Tuesday, and now would be the time for the flag salute. Okay, if we could all rise and we'll be led in our flag salute by Mitch Englander. Thank you, Mr. President. If you could all please put your right hand over your heart and join with me. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Englander. Anyway, I want to welcome everyone back. I hope you uh, had a, a very enjoyable holiday season, and I wish you good health and uh, success in the year 2014. So, uh, Madam uh, Clerk, would, would it be appropriate for us to go through the uh, agenda at this point in time? Uh, Mr. President, before we begin, there are requests to continue items 1B to February 7th. Without item objection. Item 12 to January 10th. Without objection. And item 15 to January 8th. Without objection. Items 1 through 3 are items which public hearing, items notice for public hearing. A uh, motion is required for the finance and necessity um, application for Council 9, item okay, 2. Okay, I'll make the, that motion. I need a second because Mr. Price isn't here. Okay. To grant, the motion will be to grant. And this is again for Mr. Price. Uh, we have some uh, cards on that. Let's just get them out of the way. Uh, John Walsh, please come forward. Mr. Walsh. Yes, sir. This is item one? This is item two. Item two, right. Okay, item, item two is uh, the application for determination of public convenience and necessity for alcohol sales for off-site consumption at Johnny's Market. 100% against it. You're going to vote it in. I under you understand when you do that, you add to the number of hit and run accidents. We lead American hit and run accidents and we lead them in uh, alcohol. And as you know, last week, the son of a judge and the grandson of a judge was hit and run. And the blood of, that, of that, that child, 23 year old, is on your hands for approving every single liquor license. The man who did it is on the prowl and he's drunk now and maybe he'll buy some alcohol at Johnny's Market. HollywoodHighlands.org. Okay, so Madam Clerk, we're now prepared to vote on how many items? I think uh, one of the uh, item ones, I don't know which, if it's 1B or 1A, uh, or maybe both of them are set to be continued, is it? Yes, there's a request to also continue item 1A to January 22nd. Okay, without objection. So let's prepare to vote on the uh, remaining item. And um, excuse me, Mr. Yes. K President, for item three, I believe there's cards on that item. May I want to hold that one on the, for cards? Okay, uh, Mr. Murphy, Sean Murphy, Happy New Year's to come forward, and Mr. Walsh on item number three. Yes, Mr. President, Happy New Year to everybody. I want to wish all my fans a Happy New Year. I'm for this item, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Walsh, item three.
John Walsh, blogging at hollywoodhighlands.org. It's been 20 days since I appeared before you. There's some really hot items on my website. This is the dumbest, one of the dumbest uh, agenda items I ever saw. It, uh, it concerns revising the police permit fee schedule. They're changing, they're reducing it from $253 to $248. You want me to give you the $5? What is this? You're reducing it by five bucks? You're wasting our time up here? And then we have the, uh, the false alarm fee. Well, that should be, that should be $1,000. It should be as, at least as much as the jaywalking. And what are you doing there? You're changing it from $159 to $162. $3 more. Remember, pull a false alarm and kill somebody, 162. Jaywalk, $500. Hollywoodhighlands.org. Okay, now let's prepare to vote on these items. Let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay. Thank and Mr. You. President, um, yes. for item three, the ordinance will be held over for one week, if not reconsidered. Okay. Well, hopefully, we'll have enough folk before the uh, end of the day, and we'll take that up again. So, can we move to the uh, next section? Items four through nine, I believe. Items four through nine are items which public hearings have been held. Specials, members, specials. Mr. LeBange. Number five. Number five. five. Okay, let's prepare to vote. Uh, Bu Joe, Joe Buscaino, seven. number seven. Mr. Englander. Uh, postpone on item nine till February 5th. Okay, item nine, continue to February 5th, was it? Okay, without objection. Let's vote on what's left. There is something left, right, Madam Clerk? Yes, Mr. President. Okay, let's open the roll. Uh, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, that brings us where? And um, for item four, the ordinance will be held over for a second reading for one week, if not reconsidered. Okay, all right, let's move on. Items 10 through 25 are items which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those items are now Mr. before President. us. Mr. Bonin? Could we hold item 20 for a minute? I have a substitute motion. To Let's make hold item uh, 20 at Mr. Bonin's request. Members, uh, any uh, other request on your part? Okay, how many or what cards do we have on this item? Cards on items 10. 13, 16, 17, 19, and 25. Okay, well, let's uh, hold those items and let's prepare to vote on the remaining items. If we could open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, um, Madam, Mr. Buscaino. On item four, I'm sorry, 18 fourth width, please. 18, 18 yeah. fourth width. Okay, so good. okay, Madam Clerk, that brings us where? That brings council to presentations or items called special. Yeah. Mr. Labange, are, are you ready with your presentation? So at this point in time, we want to turn the floor over to Mr. Labange. Thank you very much, Steve, Simon, and did everybody want to join us? And then, uh, Steve, I'm going to have uh, you help me introduce everybody that's here. But Mr. President, is a yes. special gathering of folks right here this morning. Uh, after a 32 year, a great 32 years of service to the city of Los Angeles, Regina Houston Swain, our general manager of the Department of Disability, is retired. I'll give you a big hand and a kiss, <laughs> Regina. Very good. It's very special is, you know, that the history that in 1973-75, ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, the office in Mayor Bradley's office was open for the Office of Disability. In the great period of Mayor Bradley's administration, and so many times he opened the doors as wide as can be for all needs and causes of good. And the Office of Disability was on the 21st floor. Yes. And I was on the 21st floor because I was on the Mayor Bradley's Youth Council back then. And he merged all these people together because there were needs in this city that he recognized so greatly. And Regina was part of that team starting off many, many years ago. 
through the years that she worked and the great job that she did, she helped uh, uh, make this department full instead of just an office. So mayors come and go, but the challenge of disability is every day. And bringing that focus to us, working with the Public Works Department, working with the Building and Safety for accessibility, having great commissioners be the voice of the community, which is so important on that. Uh, in 19, and excuse me, in 2004, she was the intern executive director of the department and became the permanent director in 2005. Uh, she has a master's of arts degree and in psychology from the uh, California State University Northridge, Mitch, uh, a proud uh, a graduate of Matador, if I must say. And she's an accomplished artist and musician and to play in her artworks in each of the six uh, art shows that are produced by the department, which is our best program, I think, when you bring people to art, whatever the case may be, and you bring those with disability who can't uh, 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 be stopped from achieving greatness because their heart and soul and the lead of the department gives her that love, you create these art programs that you see on the Henry P. Rio Bridge that crosses the City Hall of uh, people from around our city who come for the art program. That's you, Regina, who created that, and your artistic heart and soul that you created that. So I'm just pleased that over the course of time that I've been here, we've worked together, pleased to be the former chair of that committee. And I want to ask my colleague Mitchell Farrell, who was right around me somewhere uh, in a moment to come join me as well, because this is key to us, that we recognize greatness here. And know that I want to call on, before anything, Mitchell Farrell, who's now the chairman uh, of uh, this committee that oversees our department. Regina's retired, as you know, we want to say the Stephen Simon has uh, uh, learned from Regina and did such a great job, and now is the general manager. Before I'm going to ask you to speak, I want to ask uh, Mitch to say a few words, and I want to ask Stephen to say a few words. Mitch, thank, thank you. you. I know I caught you on the That's side right. right there. Thank you, Tom. Uh, colleagues, I, uh, I stand with, uh, with Tom LeBonge today, um, and just acknowledging the great service over the last 32 years of Ms. Houston uh, McSwain for giving so much to this city. And what I'm really curious about is her music skills. She's a musician, so I want to learn more about that. Uh, but I didn't have the great pleasure of serving with you, uh, so, uh, but I am honored to, to acknowledge your 32 years of service to the city, and I look very forward to working with your uh, successor. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, well done. Job well done. And uh, the great thing, too, is you see, in, whether it's in the art field, music field, dance, or athletics, who replaces who? And, uh, and, 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 they, and then who's the, the mentor who gets mentor? Stephen, you're the head of this department now, but Regina was your boss. And for those years, she kept you motivated, which you had to do the great things. And now I want to ask you to say a few words and introduce some of our very special guests and commissioners. Thank you so much, Council Member. For probably the first time ever, I'll try and be brief here, but I, I have to say, um, whatever direction we're taking in the department, wherever we're going in the future, nothing that we are going to do could be possible were it not for Regina Houston Swain. She has built this department, she's protected and defended this department, and she has made sure that we are here to make sure the rights of people with disabilities are fully realized here in the city of Los Angeles. So that said, she has been a mentor to me. I'm forever grateful for that. Joining us today are her husband, her sister, and her daughter. Joining us today are some of the key staff in the Department on Disability, the ADA coordinator from the airports. We've got folks turned out here to really honor her incredible work. I, I'm getting there. <laughs> and two of our disability commissioners, Commissioner Devera here. Commissioner Driver Gordon behind us, former Commissioner Luis Mata, who has uh, joined the department now as one of our uh, ADA coordinators. So again, thank you so much. Thank you, Regina. Please, welcome. Good job. Let's give a big hand for Regina. Yeah, you please give her a big round of applause. And I just want to say thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for really helping me with the Deaf Festival this time. You were just phenomenal, and, and I appreciate you. But it's time for you to do whatever it is you want to do. But anyway, thank you for everything. Let's give her another thank you round so much. of applause. I'd just like to say it's been an honor and a privilege to serve the people of Los Angeles, 
Uh, I couldn't have done anything without my coworkers and colleagues. Uh, Tom LaBange and Herb Wesson have championed the department. We've had the support of the mayor and council in general. And I just want to say thank you, City of Los Angeles, for what you've given me. Thank you very much. You know, I want to introduce, introduce a daddy. Here, here. Call introduce your husband. This is my husband, Houston Swain. Hello. This is my daughter, Alicia Love. Hi, thank you. And my sister, Pamela Houston Ham. Thank you. Now we'll have more time together. <laughs> thank you so much. Regina, thank you. I just want your family to know there's no bigger angel for disability, for those to speak, for those who can't speak, for those to fight. Remember, there was a chance to eliminate the department. You Same fought, way. we fought together, but you fought. You were the leader. She's an angel in the city of angels. Long retirement, Regina. Thank, thank you. you so much, thank Tom. you. Right here. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, it's my understanding that we do have a commissioner that's with us today. I believe that to be item 10. Yes. If we could uh, ask her uh, to come forward. And I have one card. From Mr. John Walsh. <laughs> Doctor, thank you for coming. Uh, we have one public comment card, and then I will defer to you. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. Don't miss what's up there. We 100% uh, support Dr. Sonia Molina. Now, uh, she's been vetted. Now, the previous mayor was very, very slipshod about vetting. We know that unlike a previous uh, nominee for a, a commission, she has no history of possession of kitty porn. And uh, as did a, a previous person that you voted 15 to nothing when uh, Villaraigosa was, was uh, the mayor. So we 100% support her, visit HollywoodHighlands.org. Thank you uh, very much. I would ask uh, if you'd like to say a few words, uh, go right ahead, but we're going to try to move this quickly for you. So please, the floor is yours. Um, I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to work with the city and um, enhance the um, arts in um, parks of um, the city. Um, I'm very excited um, with um, uh, the, some of the uh, new ideas um, as to how to expand it. So I look forward to um, working with the commission. Thank you. Okay, with that said, uh, Mr. O'Farrell, I think we'll move forward. Let's uh, uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of uh, public comment cards, and then Mr. Buscaino, I think I'm going to defer to you. So if we could have Sean Murphy and Mr. Walsh. This is general public comment. Go, go right ahead, uh, Mr. Murphy. Yes, Happy New Year, Mr. President and City Thank Council. You. I'd like to wish Michelle Obama a happy birthday two weeks from a week from Friday. She's going to be 50. I'm not far from it, Mr. President. I'll be celebrating in April. Uh, we need to keep our streets clean. Safety is important for 2014. I heard about Mr. Baca's retirement. I'm against it. I hope he changes his mind. I'm, I met Mr. Baca at John Ferraro's funeral. I talked to him. He does a fine job for the L.A. Sheriff. So what if he made, we make a, so what if he made a few mistakes? We all make mistakes, Mr. President. I'm sorry, but I'm praying that he changes his mind. We don't want to lose this man. I don't. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. 
Mr. John, Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at hollywoodhighlands.org. Uh, as far as Mr. Bach is concerned, in the morning yesterday, he was smiling, he was, he was running. Then the FBI came to him, somebody tipped him off that he's about to be arrested. He's about to be arrested unless he resigns. I know it, you know it, everybody knows it, you don't see it in the newspaper. It reminds me when I lived in Ethiopia. We all knew what was happening from the street, not from the newspaper in Addis Ababa. Haile Selassie controlled it. Here we have the mayor. He is an enormous problem. There are no FBI agents here today. They got you over here on, on sex charges and minor things. As far as Lee Baca, he's the shame of Los Angeles County. Stay away from here. This is a poison area to visit. Tourists, even our top cop. And I, I, I think that what they should do to uh, Mr. Baca now, you don't see that stuff happening over here at LAPD, do you? I think they should put him on suicide watch because that's about the only future Mr. Baca has now. And he better hire a really good lawyer, a criminal lawyer, because he's going to be criminally charged, and everybody knows it. You won't read it in the newspaper, but my favorite newspaper, of course, is La Pinion, which put me on the front page uh, the other day. And I just want and also, in Hollywood, thanks to LaBange, they tore down six ficus trees for a developer. It's all on our website. Come to our website for the alternate history of what's really happening in Los Angeles. And no one has ever challenged anything. And I want to say that it was, uh, I hope the mayor had a lot of fun in Australia. You know what I mean. HollywoodHighlands.org. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Buscaino, you want to go to item seven. I, I do have one card. Okay, and that card is, uh, no, I've just been informed that that, uh, that hearing has already been done, so we have f fulfilled our uh, requirement where it relates to a public hearing. So, Mr. Buscai, Thank you. the floor Th is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, colleagues, the item before you, um, is a reward that we are going to approve on a tragic, tragic incident that occurred in Watts when a, uh, a child was killed and murdered in uh, his father's arms. Um, the father was mistakenly identified as a gang member purely just by wearing a purple shirt. Um, you know, oftentimes we hear in these chambers how rewards don't serve as as an effective tool but uh, I'm so proud of the the work that was done by the community that clearly took a stand and said we will not put up with people killing kids and um, the work from our LAPD detectives uh, the Watts gang task force a number of community-based organizations came together and said enough is enough and the item today that we're going to approve uh, will um, um, fulfill that obligation, that commitment we made as a council, and uh, give the reward to that individual who came forward and provided LAP detectives with the, uh, the information that led to the arrest and conviction of, this, uh, of the, the knucklehead who, who committed this horrific, horrific crime. So um, I, again, I want to stand and, and thank the Watts community, the LAPD, the Watts Gang Task Force, and a number of others who uh, came forward uh, to provide uh, the detectives the information leading to the arrest and conviction uh, of this, this brutal murder. Thank you. Mr. Buscaino, and you're right, it is not okay to kill a kid. Uh, with that uh, said, let's, uh, and that is a horrific story. Let us uh, please vote on this, members. Let's open the row. Close the row, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, be jumping back and forth a little, members, with uh, general public comment and uh, our items trying to move this along. So, Richard Robinson, 
Richard, come on up. We're going to do general public comment. Don't run, Richard. Take your time. And this is general public comment. Mr. President, members, Sheriff Barker's retirement comes as a surprise to no one. His department, like the Los Angeles Police, has come under severe criticism <clears throat> for years. Sir, I hope that the critics of Sheriff Baca will recall he almost became Homeland Security Department Director. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Robinson, and please, if we could, uh, no applause. Let's uh, move on. We'll go from general public com uh, comment to item 13. Item 13 was held special for a card. Uh, Mr. Walsh, uh, we're on item 13. Held special by you, sir. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. You were off, but I wasn't. Kept posting. Okay, this is this is Mr. John Kirk Muckry, interim general manager. This is his salary. This is what his salary is going to be. If you read the agenda item, there's no mention of how much the salary is. I went to the uh, file 13-1725. There's no mention of what the salary is. I understand he's being paid $212,000. This is obscenity. If you're interested in obscenity, come to HollywoodHighlands.org and read our porn post, which concerns uh, uh, obscenity. HollywoodHighlands.org, Mr. John Muckry, these, these salaries they're giving are obscene. They're handing out. We don't even know how much he's getting. HollywoodHighlands.org. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Let's prepare to uh, vote on this item. Let's uh, open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. And Mr. President, for item 13, the salary for the interim general manager of Department of Transportation is $252,835.92. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'm going to take one... Uh, General public comment card. Is Brian here? Barajas? Yeah. I'm going to get you up early, Brian. Usually you are one of the later ones. I'm going to get you up now. Brian Barajas, general public comment. All right. Uh, so I'll just make it, yeah, two minutes. Okay. Um, I, I turned in a document called uh, Prometheus Science on the subject of Friday's webcast by Lyndon H. LaRouche. Now, his point is very simple. The new year is very simple. All of us are Prometheans. We are against the philosophies of Zeus. Zeus created the Peloponnesian Wars, or any wars of, of, of history says this. These evil bastards, the British crown, that bitch, that drug pusher, Queen Elizabeth, that Mr. Mr. That President, <laughs> this is outside the scope of the Brian, city of Los Angeles. Brian, you do have to yeah, I know. just discuss things that we yeah. directly or indirectly have. Uh, I might as well kick off the new year. So anyways, um, so this is, the, this, is, this is what we are, all of us. As I indicated before, we are... are now in thermonuclear World War III. This is a fact. The problem is that we take too many vacations and we detach ourselves from reality. Now the reality is simple actually. We are falling behind. We have a president and we have Hillary Clinton who's bought off by Wall Street And we still don't have Glass-Steagall. There are moves for it, but we still don't have it. 
What it, this implies is we are neglecting our duties, our constitutional oath, and that's a fact. We need to push this thing, this freak show, this insanity out of the United States forever. This planet has to survive. We need thermonuclear fusion. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Labange, item five, Mr. Labange. Thank you very much, members. Members, this is going to, uh, I, I think, one thing I'm going through right now, I'm doing a lot of deep thinking about the years that I've had the opportunity to serve the city of Los Angeles, not just in this role, but in other roles. And previously, the Department of Transportation had a parking administrator. But recently, under a previous administration, they dissolve that and put it all over here. Parking is a big issue in Los Angeles. And what counts is when you have one person. In a huddle, there's not 11 people talking. There's one, a quarterback. In a situation here, what I'm trying to articulate is there'd be a parking administrator. There's one person that you focus on and could get answers to directly to move forward. So this is going to be studied. The department representatives are here. They welcome the study. It was a previous administration that dissolved that, and I think it's a good thing when you could point to someone who is an administrator of a parking function, get answers, get results, and find parking. That being said, this is just a study. I ask for an I vote, and I thank you. Thank you, Mr. LeBonge. Let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Okay, Madam Clerk, it's my understanding that we, I want to say item 11 needs to be reconsidered. Yes. So on item 11, if we could vote for reconsideration, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Okay, and that was to take a uh, public comment card, correct? Correct. Okay, uh, it says Batman, Mr. Constituent, Turkey. So if that Batman, Mr. Constituent Turkey, could come forward. You need to come up now, sir. Mr. Wesson, La Opinion, John Walsh, Wanakala, and Batman Mr. Herman make the front page of La op Opinion, which are rude comments about gloves and masks he and is, a cape. He is not talking about this item. Stay. But I defend no, 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 Mr. for Herman, the public on this what item. I want to do is defend people from the corruption, the scandal by building and safety, to manipulate all of you to pay these ridiculous fees. Yes, ridiculous fees. For what? As you see on this agenda here, if they focus in, there's more than 10, including the other page on seven, when it talks about what? The resolution for removing the following properties from the rent escrow account prior to 2013 and today. The family affected by this at South Kenmore Avenue or also on page seven under Ms. Daisy at Mudford Street, I brought it to your attention that the city continues to disrupt, haggle you, all of you in Los Angeles, for citations and ridiculous amounts of citations. And why? The reason behind it, because the city is hurting for money. And so when you want to come to Los Angeles and live, expect the city to bring out all their fraud, all their mistakes by building and safety, by LA Housing Authority, and for what reason? To squander all of you for fees, charges, and added expenses to your what? Rent escrow? Likely, yes, that's the situation, as all these communicators on this side affect my public comment, speaking when I'm speaking Thank you. And interrupting. No, you're on the subject. Okay. Now... So let's uh, vote on the item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Okay, I need 
a little help here from the audience. I have a card that I really can't make out the last name. The first name is David, and then there's a reference to new business. So, David, if you could please come up and state your full name, I'd appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Uh, good, good afternoon, good morning, Honorable President and Honorable Members of Council. Uh, my name is David, and the, the last name you saw there, it's actually our company name. I'm David with Naturepedic, and we are excited. We are a new business in L.A., so some good news for you. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to thank all of you for your public service. Uh, our story is a nice one. We started by making organic crib mattresses. Uh, our founder is an expert on chemicals, and years ago he was horrified to see what was in children's mattresses. So we started making uh, organic crib mattresses in a suburb of Cleveland with Amish workers. Our company was so successful, we're in over 600 baby stores right now, that we now are making adult luxury organic mattresses. And it was with great pride that we chose Los Angeles to be our first freestanding store. Our, four is at, our store is at 456 South Robertson. We will be having a grand opening in February 9th, uh, which you all be attended to join us. Uh, we want to get active in the community. It, it's a wonderful business, and it's a wonderful opportunity for Los Angeles. And I'm just here, uh, thankfully, uh, uh, it's 20 degrees below zero in Cleveland right now, so I couldn't be happier to be here right now. And uh, we certainly just wanted to say uh, hello and welcome, and I'll stick around if anybody wants to get my card, uh, if we can do anything to uh, help the community. But the big news is, is that uh, we're opening our first uh, freestanding adult store, and we chose to do it in Los Angeles. We think it's a wonderful city, a wonderful area, and uh, I'm happy to say hello or answer any questions any of you may have. Okay. Uh, thank uh, you. you once, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, Mr. President, can I answer his question? Yes. Uh, the question was, what's the address? The address is 456 South Robertson. And we've already been active with uh, certain groups like the Environmental Media Awards. And uh, we've participated in some Hollywood events, which is exciting for us being from Ohio. So again, we're thrilled Will to be here. Will the founder be here on? Uh, and yes, the company name is uh, Naturepedic. And the website is simply a naturepedic.com. And you can find all the information about the baby and the adult uh, mattresses there. And our founder and some of our uh, top science people will all be there on February 9th for the store opening. OK, well, good luck to you. And if you didn't know, know that I am a Clevelander born and raised. So congratulations to you. Thank you, sir. And once again, thank you all for your service. All right. Now we're going to go to item 16, called special by a card, Mr. Constituent. And I can't make, well, yeah, Mr. Constituent, item 16. As the time runs, before I get up here, it's very well. No, no, wait a minute. I called your name. You need to be ready to go. So do you, I'm do you not going to wait. No, in fact, here, you want to you want to speak? I'll let you. But I'm telling you, when we call your name, start coming to the podium, and you did not, sir. So speak. So you're, you're saying I'm forced okay. To you're rush finished up here? on this one. You're finished. All right. Let's prepare to vote on this item. When we call your name, come forward. You did not. Let's uh, prepare to vote. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. 17. Mr. Walsh, item 17, John, item 17. <sighs> Did I make it in time? <sighs> no, you do a good job. Okay, Mr. Walsh. Uh, this is a reward for the apprehension and conviction of the people responsible for the murder of Harvey Cohn. Uh, you take a long time. He was murdered on September 19th. Uh, we had another murder uh, recently in November. You're just doing a, uh, uh, for God as Father, you're doing a, uh, putting out a big press release, big uh, a, a press conference, get it in your picture in the paper, two months. No suspects in, for Harvey Cohn and no suspects for Joseph Gatto. This whole is a farce. It's a waste of time. All, most of these uh, rewards mean nothing except getting your picture in the newspaper 
and on television. Hollywoodhighlands.org, check out our website, see the pornography on there. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Has the uh, amendment on 20 been circulated? Yes, Mr. President. Why don't we uh, deal with uh, item 20? So let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. It's adopted as amended. All righty. So now we move to, Madam Clerk, I think that brings us to 19. Yes. And that was called uh, special by Mr. Sean Murphy. Mr. Murphy, please come forward on item 19. Uh, yes, item 19, I support 10, 10 eyes. Thank you. And you might get 11. Let's uh, prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. All right, so that brings us to item 25, called special by cards, I believe. And that's, uh, Mr. Murphy, that's you as well. It's the last card, too. Item 25. Yes, item 25, I'm for it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's prepare to uh, vote on the items. Let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. Okay, Madam Clerk, we have some items where we did not have uh, t a dozen members. Uh, if you would call those items, I think we vote for reconsideration, and then we actually vote on the items. Yes, that's for items three and four. Okay, so let's vote first on reconsideration. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. Okay, now this vote on the actual items. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. Okay. Okay, I think uh, I have... Uh, Public comment from Mr. Co Batman, Mr. Constituent. General public comment. Saturday, La Opinion. And I should run up here because obviously some racists believe that a disabled person should do what they're told based on what they think is possible and better for you. But not that it's a beautiful, not that it was beautiful, but that in the end, there was a certain sense of order. Not there, not in LA, not here in Los Angeles. Why? Because we still have discrimination and racist issues and biasness going on here. Americans, the frustration and conflicts experienced in this role are not woven for all Americans. Homelessness is an issue. Homelessness is a crisis. And that affects the lives of many that all of you who discriminate, Mr. Kerkorian, and on this side, Mr. Fuentes, we have to get involved and listen to the public. The public needs your support in ending homelessness in Los Angeles. Homeless people do not deserve to be kicked off public sidewalks, do not get their items destroyed or thrown in the trash, Mr. Wesson, because this is not a society of discrimination, no. The wave also affects the affluent family and friends of homeless people with no outlook for a history that this city has hindered the lives of many. And going off topic, yes, Saturday, La Opinion, John Walsh, Juan Acala, and Mr. Herman, representing who? All of you, Los Angeles, front page of the La Opinion on the 21st of Saturday. Yes, because what? We wear ridiculous gloves. And what? We wear a mask. But I wear a mask for a purpose, to prove to all of you children that are watching, the thousands of you, versus the millions of Angelinos listening, that the corruption and bullshit here is so offensive that you should pay attention thank to you, it. Thank you, thank you. Your time has uh, expired. 
Okay. Uh, I think, uh, Mr. City Attorney, we have a special. Mr. LeBonge, is this special one, maybe? Thank you, Mr. President. Since the posting of today's agenda, the LAPD has requested that the City Council offer a reward, reward for information leading to the arrest of the suspects who committed the home invasion murder of Joseph Gatto on November 13th, 2013, in the 2800 block of Bright Lane. Immediate action is required in order to apprehend the suspect for the safety of the community. Council must first make findings pursuant to Government Code Section 54954.2 before considering the substantive motion. Yeah. Okay, let's vote on the findings. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 eyes. And Mr. LeBonge, before you start, it should, it's worth mentioning as a FYI that items 7 and 8 today were actual payouts on reward motions. So with that said, Mr. LeBonge, Mr. O'Farrell, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, uh, I'm joined here with Councilman O'Farrell and Mr. Busca, you know, a longtime family friend of the Gatto family, as you know, the tragedy that took place in Silver Lake. With us today is William Hayes, uh, commander of the Robbery Homicide Division. This is a request of the Los Angeles Police Department as we go forth in this investigation. Uh, Captain, can you just say a few words? Certainly. As you're aware, the death of Mr. Gatto occurred on November 12th. Uh, in the evening, his body was discovered on the 13th. Um, what we've done is we've done a number of investigative steps, but we're at a point where we believe someone out there knows or is aware of, of who is responsible for Mr. Gatto's death, but is reluctant to come forward. We're hopeful that this um, uh, reward will stimulate that individual or individuals to come forward and give us the evidence we need to further the investigation in this case. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And along with our mayor and our chief of police today at 2 in the afternoon, there will be a public announcement of this. So I ask for an I vote and forthwith. All right, with that said, let's uh, vote on this. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Forthwith at Mr. LeBonge's request. I think I have one general public comment card left. Mr. Marine, Henry Marine. Yes, uh, Happy New Year. Uh, I want to thank JFK for warning me not to ask public fund administrators what they can do for me until I had proof in black and white of what I've done for the people. And that proof is a DD-214 form, hackling code check stubs, W-2s, receipts from the IRS, Social Security Department, and everybody else. Now, you know y'all all got the same rights as Martin Ludlow. You got to count for the time and money of others in the first place, and voluntarily, or you can wait for the city deputy, to, I mean the district attorney, to knock on your door and say you is guilty of a felony. Now, if you is a union person, you won't get to work again in the union for 13 years. If you a uh, city councilman, you ain't gonna get the whole public office for four more years. So when y'all gonna wake up, Mr. Kokorian, I gotta agree with him and Mr. Bernard Boggs on, on the budget committee. They say, we don't, we don't live in no perfect world. And we know your people on the budget committee ain't been accounting for our money. They've been, t it shows, MOU show, every percent the members of Hack Bowden City Council agreed to take from departments receiving construction federal and state construction funds and putting union trusts in lieu of providing them in to government employee pension benefit plans. Now, what's your problem? Look at me, Mr. Box. I mean, Miss Miss Wesson, first word in Wesson is we. The last word is own. Now, get this on the agenda and get it taken care of. What's your problem? CD10, you, you can't make the same mistakes as your predecessors. And you know what happened to your predecessor, Mr. Wesson? Now, now, don't make that, vacate that office again before it's time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Marine. Uh, that concludes today's general uh, public comment. Uh, Madam Clerk, that brings us where? Council has motions for posting and referral. 
They are posted and referred. That clears the desk. Announcements, members. Any, Mr. Labonge. Announcement before we go to adjourning motions. Okay. Any other announcements? Mr. Englander, if everyone in the council chambers could please rise. We are at the adjourning motion portion. Now, Mr. Labonge. A year ago, our friend Hugh Hauser passed, and uh, we still uh, celebrate him, and he's still celebrated with his work. I wanted to start uh, uh, my brief adjourning motions with remembering someone who went before us who's still with us, who absolutely loved anything that was interesting, and what a great guy that he was. This afternoon, in the community, we're going to see the sunset from the observatory in memory of Hewell Hauser on the date of his passing. Mr. President, uh, since there has been time passed, I just, for the clerk's benefit, call some names of people we should remember. Uh, John, uh, uh, David Eisenhower, uh, Sheldon Douglas Eisenhower, who was the son of Dwight Eisenhower, he passed recently. Uh, for that family, let's remember John uh, Sheldon Dowd Eisenhower. Also, for anybody my age or older, so that's about all of you, uh, Phil Everly, the Everly Brothers rock and roll, unbelievable uh, duo who was so special. We should remember them. Also, uh, in the original race car, STP, Andy Granatelli, his family, which our family knew, a great guy, lived into his 90s. Uh, wonderful guy, wonderful family. Shall he be remembered in his work that he did with Mario Andretti and his cars and his conventional work in auto racing as well? And lastly, I'd like to ask that Frederick Reinstein, who was a constituent of mine, and the sad thing sometimes is you don't know how special is the person next to you? Uh, but uh, as this man who lived in my district was in the news business as well, was in the Dallas City Hall on that Sunday morning uh, when we all saw uh, the tragedy uh, uh, again unfold, of uh, the greatest tragedy of the death of Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, but that of uh, the witness the shooting, a newsman, a loving man, and a wonderful wife who was very involved in the community involved with many things in the neighborhood. I ask we adjourn in memory of Frederick Reinstein, who was a very special man, who was a reporter and a great guy, a lover of arts. Thank you, Mr. President, for all those who went before us. Thank you, Mr. Labonge. Mr. Englander. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, colleagues. I'm joined here today uh, with one of our finest LAPD chiefs, Aguirre, Aguirre. And uh, it is with great sadness that we inform you uh, that Eduardo Maxion, an officer with Los Angeles Police Department, recently passed away in October of 2013. Ed was born in August, on August 18, 1957, in the Philippines. He received a degree in theological studies at Febius College of Bible in the Philippines before immigrating to the United States in 1983. In 1985, he joined the United States Marine Corps. He was named the Grand Old Man of his platoon 3081, since at the age of 27, he was the eldest in his platoon. In 1989, he was activated for Operation Desert Storm. In 1996, he was appointed as a police officer with the General Services Police Department here in Los Angeles. After joining the city of Los Angeles, Ed maintained his reserve officer status in the Marine Corps. In 2000, he was activated for Kosovo Peacekeeping Force and was activated again in 2003 and 2010 for Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. In fact, as reserve, he served six tours representing this country. In 2013, he was appointed as an officer with the Los Angeles Police Department. Today, we are joined, but with his, we are joined, his wife, Rodana, his sisters, Lolita and Nancy, parents, Isabel, Romerico, who flew in from the Philippines just for today to be here with us. We are also joined uh, with his, by his children, Ian and Carol, and uh, we ask that uh, we adjourn uh, in Eduardo Maxian's remembrance, uh, and uh, he served us well here, putting his life and his family um, 
on the front lines to protect not only the city but this country. Thank you. Well done, Mr. Englander. Thank you very much. Uh, other adjourning motions? Mr. Bonin. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, I ask today that uh, we adjourn in memory of two members of the Pacific Palisades community. Pacific Palisades lost uh, two people over the holidays, tragic deaths, one a few days before Christmas and one on New Year's Eve. One was a giant of a woman who lived a long and full and rich life, and one was a young man whose uh, promising long and full and rich life was just ahead of him and was killed tragically on New Year's Eve. Um, that young man was named David Pregerson. He was 23 years old. Uh, many of us may know his family. His uh, father, Dean, is a U.S. District Court judge who hears most of our Venice Beach oceanfront walk vending cases. And his uh, grandson, Harry, uh, was on the Ninth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals. Uh, David recently graduated from UCLA, and he was working on movies and television shows, including a web-based soap opera series called The Bay. Uh, his friend said he was uh, incredibly talented, creative, imaginative, and dedicated. They all said he was uh, destined to be the next Spielberg, a claim that, that nobody has challenged. Uh, his father at his funeral, his memorial service, uh, talked about his unique and uh, outsized and inspiring personality and spoke of the Daveness of Dave. Uh, one of his friends told an anecdote about him, which I thought was incredibly amusing. Um, he once wore an LED, a, a shining light belt buckle, to a bar with his phone number shining so yeah. that all of the women would know what number to call after he left. Uh, LAPD is investigating this, uh, his death. It was the result of a hit and run uh, a few days after Christmas. Uh, he was walking across Chautauqua and uh, was hit and uh, was left there, abandoned and unattended. A passerby found his body, and his friends have been actively engaged with uh, social media and technology in trying to assist LAPD in this investigation. Um, the other adjourning motion I have today is for a Palisadian who is a legend. Mr. LeBonge often asks people where they went to high school, and if he ever asked anybody where they went to high school and they said Pally High, that person probably had Rose Gilbert as a teacher. Uh, as the LA Times said, to see Rose Gilbert, a nonstop five-foot dynamo in front of a high school classroom, was to see a master at work. I'm on fire, she'd tell her 12th graders in room 204 at Pally Charter High School, and she'd emphasize that point by wearing a red plastic firefighter's helmet. Uh, she spent more than a half century imparting a love of Homer and Faulkner and Joyce to her students. Uh, she was there every semester for 50 years, well into her 90s. She uh, lectured in English and on the classics. Uh, her favorites were The Great Gatsby and The Iliad. Uh, in her spare time, she coached academic decathlon, and she traveled the world avidly and supported the UCLA Bruins men's and women's basketball teams. She was an award-winning teacher, and for a while, she was the oldest serving full-time teacher in LAUSD. Uh, she was a bit of a celebrity in the community. She'd been featured on television. Uh, she died of uh, age-related causes uh, on December 17th at uh, St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica. Uh, she had just retired in 2012 and 2013. I just met her last summer. Um, she said that one of her proudest accomplishments was the school's Maggie Gilbert Aquatic Center, which was named after her daughter, a swimmer and scholar who died in 2004. Uh, Rose herself donated $2 million and lent the school another $7,500,000 to complete that center in 2010. She could have retired uh, uh, quietly when she did so, but that wasn't enough for her. Uh, the day that they, they dedicated a drama classroom to her, she announced that she was going to work as a volunteer at the Venice Family Clinic helping with battered women. Uh, she was a legend, Palisades loved her, uh, and she is uh, sorely, sorely missed. Thank you. Mr. Buscaino. It's a great tribute, Mike. Uh, colleagues, it was with great sadness that I ask that we adjourn uh, in memory of John Pop Holland, a retired member of the Los Angeles Fire Department and longtime San Pedro resident. Pop Holland was born in Alfalfa, Oklahoma on July 17, 1926, married the love of his life, Mary, his wife of 60 years in 1944, and served his country during World War II as a sergeant in the U.S. Army um, Air Corps. He served uh, with the 418th Night Fighter Squadron, squadron 
and um, saw action as a gunner and ground repair supervisor in the Pacific Campaign. Pop Holland joined the uh, LA Fire Department in 1950 and served the city for 30 years before retiring uh, to serve and serve the city uh, before retiring to, to spend more time with his beloved family and indulge in his hobbies of hunting, camping, and rebuilding old engines. Pop Holland was preceded in death by his, his wife Mary and his son Johnny. He is survived by his son Jim, daughter Janie, five grandchildren, and seven great-grandchildren. Pop's memorial service will be held this Friday, January 10th, 11 a.m. at Green Hills Mortuary in Rancho Palos Verdes. May he rest in peace. Also, um, I ask that uh, we adjourn also in memory of um, Coach Ag, as we call him at San Pedro High School, Jerry Aguilar, a longtime San Pedro High School football coach uh, who sadly passed away over the holiday recess. Coach Ag was born in Flagstaff, Arizona in 1947 and later moved uh, to the harbor, graduating from Banning High School uh, in Wilmington. After graduating, Coach Ag was drafted into the, into the Army, serving as a combat medic during the Vietnam War. Following the war, Jerry became a nurse, but his true passion was coaching. He impacted so many lives at San Pedro High School, where uh, his sayings, lessons, and warmth left a lasting impression on the countless young men who benefited from his teachings. Uh, Coach Ag is survived by his father, Ramon Aguilar, his wife of 41 years, Luis, his son, Raymond, uh, daughters, Angela, Carrie, and Jennifer, and numerous grandchildren and extended family members. Also, I want to say he's survived by a number of football players that he impacted. Um, funeral services were held on December 27th at Mary Star of the Sea Church in San Pedro. Coach Ag, we're going to miss you. God bless you. Thank you for all that you've done for our, our young men in San Pedro. May, may you rest in peace. Thank you. Uh, other, Mr. Koretz? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd just like to say a little more about Phil Everly because he was an essential part of our LA musical landscape. When we talk about the most significant uh, acts of our Southern California recent musical heritage like the Beach Boys and the Birds and Linda Ronstadt, we're talking about performers who were significantly influenced by uh, Phil and Don Everly, the Everly brothers. Um, they, Phil usually was responsible for the higher harmonics, also wrote many of the songs. Um, and there were many other groups that were significantly influenced by them, from Simon and Garfunkel to the Beatles to the Hollies and much of country music as well. So uh, their influence uh, is still felt today. Uh, they were among the first ten acts uh, uh, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when it was founded. Uh, they uh, received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 1997. And uh, not all of us are, are old enough to remember uh, all of their hits, but they had 35 top 100 hits in the 50s and 60s, were hugely popular. Um, you'll remember some of the songs, Wake Up Little Susie, Bye Bye Love, Kathy's Clown, and. You know, we probably all recognize that are old enough to recognize them, 15 or 20 uh, uh, others of their great songs. Uh, they served in the Marines. Um, they both dealt with uh, personal issues such as addiction, had significant solo careers, uh, were tremendous guitarists as well as vocalists, and did uh, a lot of charitable benefits. Uh, Phil Ever Everly uh, uh, was a lifetime smoker to which his family attributes uh, his death, sadly, and he's survived by his wife, uh, Patty Everly, and by, of course, his brother, Don. And may he rest in peace. Thank you, uh, Mr. Koretz. Any other uh, adjourning motions? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned.